Hi neighbors, welcome back to another video of Cooking with Neighbors. My name is Jerry Ellen. Welcome to my home and welcome to my kitchen. I appreciate you being here. Take time out of your day to come over to visit me. Uh, it's beyond words how grateful that I am for that. My dog, Harrietta, she don't like the rain, the poor little thing. And it's raining out and she needs to go pee. <laughs> but I'm making hot cross buns today and I gotta show you my find that from the estate sale. I could eat these all year round, except for I, we save them special for Easter. It's based on a, a recipe from a cookbook that I got back when my Andrew was a baby. So back at probably the late 80s, maybe 1990 or something like that, but late 80s or uh, a beginning of uh, the 1990s. It is from Community Cookbook. It, now I had uh, changed it up through the years, but this is the, the cookbook that I have. And the recipe is in the Easter brunch section at the beginning. It, this book is jam-packed, jam-packed with deliciousness. Anyways, enough talk. Pitter-patter, let's get at her. Okay, based on this, but I will still give you the recipe, the original, plus the, the way that I changed it. Now you can use your stand mixer, you can do this by hand. I am going to dump it all in my bread maker and let my bread maker do the work on the dough setting. That way I can do my laundry, I can tidy my dining room, which I'm gonna take you into in a minute. That's another part of this video. I'm gonna take you in there because I gotta show you something that we got, something from the 1970s. And I love it. We love it. We can't believe that we got it. I'm sorry, sometimes I do chat a bit, and sometimes it takes a minute to get into the recipe, but I'll timestamp it so that if you don't want to listen to me gab away, you can skip that part onto the parts that you like. It, call, it calls for four cups of flour, okay? But one of those cups you're gonna set aside. I usually haven't measured out in these, but I just thought I'd do it with you today. Uh, you can use all-purpose flour, you can use bread flour. I'm just loosening my flour. One cup of it is going to be measured and put into a bowl and set aside. And I'm taking my loose flour and I'm just putting it into the cup here until it's overflowed. And then you can use a knife or what have you and just scrape off the Top. And that, because I am not using the scale, is how I'm measuring the flour. Learned that in home economics. Home ec. When I lived in Cape Breton, and I went, we had home ec class. And we went up to the home ec class in Ashby, in Sydney. And it was fun. Anyways, now I want three more cups I'm gonna put in this bowl. Just to walk up the hill, to a school that had the home ec class in it. Sometimes it was cold. We literally walked uphill in, in the blizzard. It's not just like uh, that us uh, boomers say that we walked uphill in a snowstorm. We actually did. Two. I need one more. I have two eggs, I'm just going to uh, crack into uh, separate bowls. Now, if you were separating it, like the recipe calls for one of the eggs to be separated, but I don't do that. It's for like brushing the buns. But if you were to separate it, it is easier to separate cold eggs. So when you take them out and you want your eggs to be room temperature, but they need to be separated, separate them first. It's a lot easier. So we gotta get a cloth and wipe off the counter. Deedly doo. I was up, I went to the bulk barn today and I picked up, you, I, I went to the bulk barn and I picked up some citron. So like a candid, you can get candid lemon and orange, candid orange or candid lemon. Uh, this particular place had the candid lemon and orange like mix, which is the one that I like to use. The recipe calls for candid lemon. Uh, I always liked a little bit of orange and lemon in it. So if you can't find, you don't need this much. I'm just gonna be making these buns again for some people. So that's why I got more. 
than I need for this recipe right now for the amount I'm making. But enough that. Okay. Uh, so if you don't have or can't find like the candid uh, orange and lemon or the candid lemon itself or the candid orange itself, just use uh, and grate yourself a, an orange into the into the flower or a lemon or both. Okay. Little tipperoni because I can, sometimes I can't find that but now that it, there's a bulk barn here in town they usually have things like that that I need. Let's do this. I need a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now you can use a quarter of a teaspoon of ground clove or, uh, all, or allspice. I'm using allspice. A quarter of a teaspoon. It calls for a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg, like a, the dry nutmeg, but I'm using fresh, so if you have fresh, don't you don't need to put that much in, but a, a nice little dusting. You can do uh, like a bit more than an eighth of a teaspoon if it's fresh, because the fresh is a lot stronger than the dry. Because the dry, if you have it, sometimes you end up with a nice one, a good one, and it lasts months. And sometimes it loses its flavor after a short amount of time. Mmm, that smells nice. Half a teaspoon of salt. A quarter cup of uh, granulated sugar. Now I'm going to put my raisins, a half a cup of raisins, right into this dry mixture. You can use currants or raisins. I'm going to use a quarter of a cup of my candied lemon and orange. Now if you don't have this and you're just using an orange or a lemon or what have you to grate in there, you can up the amount of raisins by a quarter of a cup. Or just keep them half a cup. You don't like that many raisins. Break them up. The flour helps break them up. That's why I like to put it in right now. That way I don't have a clump. Just making sure the raisins and, and, and everything are all broken, like not sticking together. Now the book adds the instant yeast into the flour, but I, I added it into my wet when I put the wet in my, uh, my bread maker. I have a quarter cup of butter and one cup of milk. And I'm gonna warm that up in the microwave. Just for, not too, too hot. Check the temperature of it. I like it to be around 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Just making sure the butter is mostly melted. Stick around, cause the glaze on this is good too. Basically, it took my uh, microwave uh, about 44 seconds. Uh, it, it, and it's warm enough. The butter is melting pretty good. Package of uh, active dry yeast. A package is two and a quarter teaspoon. If you want, you could see if your yeast is good by putting a bit of it in some warm water and see if it's bubbling for you after five minutes. And you can test it that way before you use milk and butter and all that. That costs more money. Oh, and I forgot to add a quarter cup of water to my milk and butter that I'm warming up in the microwave. But I end up adding it. Just uh, want you to know, add a quarter cup of water to that mix. See, that's why I usually have everything all laid out and measured. That way you don't make a mistake. Mise en place, people. And when I try to skip the mise en place, I end up making a mistake. So, lesson for, for us all there. Yeah, you should, but today I thought I'll just measure as I go. I'll prep with you while I talk. Not such a great idea, but I do add the quarter cup. I'm gonna add our dry ingredients. Don't wanna spill it. Smells so good. And then I'm gonna add an egg on top. It's plugged in. I gotta clean my mess. 
Uh, select. I'm going to go down. Mine says uh, level and dough. Okay, and I'm going to press start. A quarter cup. Oh, I got to add a quarter cup. Yeah, I got to add a quarter cup of water. A quarter cup of water should have been added with the milk. Sorry. Well, neighbors, I pretty much got the dining room together. I still have some work to do in here. We're going to paint it. I don't know exactly when, but I'll share that whenever we do paint it. I'll share it with you. But here is my find. I love it so much. Before I picked it up, we were thinking that we were going to chalk paint it to match this chalk painted uh, uh, thing that we have here, the buffet thing that we have here. So we were going to do that. However, we changed our mind because it's too pretty. It's very gorgeous. We love it so much. Excuse the things underneath there. We're going to remove those. Uh, my old real estate signs. I didn't want it to scratch the floor when Graham and I were taking it in. So we had put it on that to kind of drag it some of the way. Yeah, and I'm going to insert a picture of it with the light on in the dining room because there's a light on it that works. Neighbors, guess what I paid? None of you would be able to guess, except for the people that I might have told. And that's not a guess, because they know it. But look at it. It's gorgeous. It's in great condition. I, I, I can't get over it. I paid $1.33 because I had to pay some tax on it and a commission fee. So basically, I paid $1, and then they had some percentage fees or taxes. That's it. There was a couple of, of china cabinets at this estate auction, right? And with the, sorry, I should have this on a stand one second. That's better. I don't want to be, it shaking all around and being annoying to you all. But uh, there was this estate sale auction and there was a few china cabinets at this estate sale. There wasn't very many people that were bidding on the china cabinets. There wasn't very many people bidding on uh, the few things that were there, but there were some. And what happened was, this here was the last china cabinet that was on the list. And I was like, I'm just gonna go for the last one. I like the color of it. What we're gonna do is uh, restain, cause it's gonna need it anyway, uh, restain the top of this and the base of the chairs to match that and the top of that to match that. So we need it to be like a cherry wood color, but that's an, a, a project that we'll share with you down the road. Anyway, I, I went off track for a second there. So this was the last China cabinet and the other ones were beautiful. Uh, some of them were a little smaller than that. And because I wanted the larger one, Plus, I thought my luck might be better with the last one because everyone started to bid on the first one, so that went for a high pr higher price. The people that lost, they went on to the second one. And there was only, a, then there was one person less because they got the first one. They went to the next one and they bid it on, on that one and the price went up. And then there was just a couple of more people and then by the time that this came around, I was the only one left to bid on it. So I put a max bid of $35. Uh, you know, at $35, I was like, that's all I'm gonna spend at the auction today is $35. So nobody bid on it. So they, it starts off with a dollar out of my 35 and no one bid on it because everybody already bought the other china cabinets. So I got it for a dollar. So yeah, I was super, super happy about that. I'm rambling because I was just so excited. And neighbors, before we get back to the recipe, to the rest of the recipe, I just wanna show you these books. Look at this. My friend Merle, I have to thank her. Look what Merle sent me. 
And I can't wait to get into these books and share what's inside of these books, the recipes that are in here with you all. Like, I am just so thrilled and I am going to treasure these the rest of my life, Merle. Thank you so much, my friend. My friends, I have a pan that you want to grease or spray with cooking spray. Uh, I'll spray it again. I, I, a lot of times I just use lard or, or, or butter, but I got some of this. Uh, this is ready to come out. and Look how high it is on my bread maker. Uh, if your dough is sticky, use a little bit of the flour you reserved to, t to uh, do this. Even when it's starting to uh, mix, I'm going to wash my hands again. Even when it starts to mix in there, if it looks super wet, add just a titch, like a tablespoon or two of the flour that you reserved. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. Look at that. I'm telling you, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Now I'm just going to dust it. I got this mat, but. I want to make uh, 12 buns. So make like a log, a nice long log. You wanna know what? I'm gonna eyeball it, maybe, maybe. Cause I already rolled it out, but a lot of times what I do, or every time, I don't know why I did not do it this time. I get a scale. And I weigh it. And then I kind of do the math on what each one should be. But today I'm just gonna eyeball it. And my inner self is arguing with me not to eyeball it. Well, I don't know if I can eyeball. I, I, I got OCD sometimes. It's a little sticky of the dough. Okay, I'm gonna get 12 balls out of this. And then you wanna pinch your bottom. Pinch your bottom around the same size but I'm just guessing so and then if you had an extra piece you push it into the bottom and then you could just fold the bottom and just pinch it and fold it right and you just pinch it closed on the bottom and you place it in your dish just a little space in between each one It's a little sticky, but that's okay. You can flour your hands a little bit and your hands make sure they're clean. Okay, and there's our 12, all measured out, spaced apart a little bit in the pan. And now you can cover it with a clean, damp cloth or cling film. Cloth is just a damp one. It's not wringing wet. And depending on the temperature of your kitchen, will depend on how long you leave them sit there for, but I'm gonna give them 55, you want 45 to 60 minutes, probably. You, you can peek at them and just see if they're about doubled inside. Okay, neighbors, my oven is preheated to uh, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And look at these, look at those. They look fabulous. Just one sec, I'm gonna brush it with a bit of an egg wash. Now the original re the recipe in there just uses egg yolk mixed with a tablespoon of water. I you don't have to, I, I'm using the whole egg. And I whisk it up. I'm gonna brush this on. Okay. Now this part is optional. You can bake these off right now if you wanted to. But I like uh, to take about a third of a cup of flour and I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna make paste. So you wanna add three to five tablespoons of water to make the paste. Not thin enough. Mm. 
you want a, a, a thick-ish, thick-ish. You want it pipeable. I'm just gonna have just a drop of water left in there. I don't like it to be too thin. So a third of a cup of uh, flour and about five tablespoons of water. You can get a Ziploc bag and put it in and then cut the little part off the, the corner of the Ziploc bag to make a, a piping bag. This hole might be too big. That one's already used. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to put this in this baggie. I'll be there in a second, honey. Arietta was enjoying me on the couch with her. She don't like that I left. Close my Ziploc bag. Oh, I didn't make this too thin. Cut the tip off, oops. Now I'm gonna make a cross. Uh, hot cross buns. The cross represents the crucifixion of Jesus. The spices used uh, represents, uh, like they use certain uh, spices uh, when they are preparing the body to lay to rest. So that's what the, the cinnamon and everything is for. So that is a bit of the story of the hot cross buns. Now you, you can skip this step like I say, because a lot of times what I do is I uh, use uh, icing uh, like uh, afterwards but sometimes I don't so just in case I don't feel like it because wait till you see the glaze that I'm gonna use but it's it's really nice I'm coming soon honey so you just do that and now I'm just gonna pop them in the oven and I'm just gonna put the timer on they're just about ready to come out of the oven and I just opened up some apricot preserves, apricot jam. And I'm gonna put like a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup or so of this. Let's, and I'm gonna put a few tablespoons of water. And I'm just gonna give this a nuke for uh, 30, 40 seconds. Love apricot jam. You want your hot cross. You want like you want your hot cross buns to have like a nice brown color on them. Oh, I want this uh, apricot to melt into the water because I don't want to brush it with water. I want to brush it with the glaze. So I'm just squishing up the apricot jam into the water. That smells so good. It smells so good. Now you can make a glaze just with uh, some uh, powdered sugar, icing sugar, with a little bit of water or milk in it to make a uh, glaze. Uh, and then you can uh, use the icing sugar and a little bit of milk or water to make a thicker like icing that you can pipe the cross on top. I'm probably just going to glaze it today. <laughs> Look at Harrietta. It smells absolutely amazing. So you just kind of want like a runny-ish mixture. It's okay if there's some lumps in there because you're going to put this glaze on while it's hot, okay? Even if you're doing like the ice, even if you're doing the ice and sugar glaze, you want to put it on while the buns are hot out of the oven. Like, what do you think? Oh my, 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 my. They are done. And they, they take about 20, 25 minutes at that temperature, at least in my oven. Now the original recipe says that it cooks shorter and I'm like, it never cooked in 10 minutes for me. It always took me 20, 25 minutes at this temperature. Now let's glaze them. Uh, 
They are so beautiful. This is a wonderful recipe, wonderful. And in case you haven't been told today, you're amazing. If nobody told you that, I want you to tell it, I'm telling you it, and I want you to tell it to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Do good things for yourself. Treat yourself nice. Make sure you look after yourself. And the people you love. Make sure, never let anybody leave your home or hang up your, the phone without you telling them that you love them. This life is short. Like, look at that. Look at that. Now, you can put the icing sugar, uh, do the icing sugar glaze, like I say, if you want. But if you're piping like the cross with the uh, frosting, uh, make sure that it's cooled for that. Glazing, you do it while it's hot out of the oven. But the icing, you do when it's cooled off. And I just love this. And then after, just pile them up in a, in a in something nice for your family or your guests. And they will love you. When it cools, I'll come back and I'll show you the inside. I'm breaking my rule. I'm gonna break my rule. Taking one off, I don't, I don't I'm, I'm taking one off right now. That's amazing. I love it. Our family's gonna love it. I gotta get to making some more, probably tonight or tomorrow, but I gotta make some. I'm gonna to try to come back with another recipe before Easter, but if I don't, I love you all. Peace, love, God bless, and happy Easter. Take care, everyone. Bye.